Chapter 4, Section 2, Canal Drawing To identify the alveolar canal on our 3D scans, the icon to access is displayed in the menu bar at the top. When you left click, the drop down menu will give you an option to draw your canal. Drawing the canal will be done through a series of left clicks with your mouse to identify the points going either anterior posterior, posterior anterior, and then identifying the canal in the mandible. The draw canal feature is located in the toolbar at the top of the screen. When hovering the mouse on top of the icon, it will state draw canal. In this example, we're going to work with our 2D pan reconstruction in the bottom left hand corner. To activate the function, left click on the icon and then left click on manual. To work with this 2D pan reconstruction, we'll go ahead and maximize our view and then from here we have the ability where we can use the center wheel of our mouse to essentially scroll through our anatomy between the cortical plates, such as this here where I scroll towards the lingual side or scroll the mouse towards me where I'm going out towards the buccal side where I can now see the mental foramen. In this case here, we'll start from the mental foramen and go anterior posterior. The idea is to essentially identify the center of our canal by placing our landmark by left clicking. I then scroll my mouse through the arch going in towards the trabecular bone where I begin to see the canal itself. In this case here, we're going to plot our landmark between the superior and inferior border of our nerve. As we progress going further back, we can either go all the way back to the mandibular foramen or to a point where it's no longer part of our treatment plan. Once you are finished, simply double click and you now identify the canal on our 2D pan reconstruction view. We'll go back to our normal view and be able to identify the canal is now displayed in every window within the software where that area of anatomy is visible, including our 3D window here, as well as navigating back over to our NPR view, where we can see it in our coronal view, our axial view, and perhaps even in the sagittal view here on the left-hand side of the patient's arch. as shown here in the upper right hand corner. We can also then see it within our curve window again within our sectional views by left clicking on the sectional line until it becomes visible then within our sectional windows. Simply double click to be able to visualize it within our sectional window. To edit the canal itself simply position the mouse on top of the canal left click and we're now in the edit mode. To reposition any of these landmarks, simply left click, drag it to either the left or the right, left click anywhere on the screen to reposition the canal itself. We also have the ability where we can modify the diameter of our canal, which is set at a default of 2 millimeters, to compensate for morphology differences of the particular patient. In this case here, the canal is approximately 3 millimeters in diameter. We can left click to get into our edit mode here, however, we can also identify the icon at the top of the window for our canal manager. Left click and then from here we can then change the properties of this canal itself, including the diameter, which in this case here we'll change it to 3 millimeters. Left click on OK, left click on close, and now we change the size of our canal itself. We also have the ability to change the color as well by going back up to our canal manager, left click on the canal we've just drawn, left click on color, perhaps yellow, and then select close. At this point in time, I would encourage you to pause the video and then perform the steps to draw the alveolar canal in the mandible by selecting the icon in the toolbar at the top and then using the pan reconstruction to generate your canal itself. In our next example of constructing our canal within the mandible, 
we're going to utilize this section of views within the pan curve window. To do this, simply double click on a sectional view and then left click on the vertical line that identifies the sectional view above and then drag the line across. In this case here, we'll stop when we get to the metal frame in itself, which is now visible in sectional number 69. From here, it's encouraged to take your mouse and simply travel along with the canal as it goes anterior posterior to identify it within the arch itself. There is an enhancement tool to define the edges of our image by left clicking on the apply filter icon on the bottom, left click on 2D on sharpen, and it'll help sharpen up the edges of our anatomy. Once you've identified the canal itself, Again, you can either go posterior anterior or anterior posterior. In this case here, I'll go ahead and go from the posterior area of the arch out towards the mental frame in itself. To do that, we'll navigate to the top of the window, left click on draw canal, and left click on manual. From here, once we have identified our canal, we'll go ahead and plot our landmarks. Left click here, and continue scrolling the mouse towards me, and identifying our canal as it goes from the posterior anterior. Placing landmarks anywhere between 5 and 10 millimeters is fine. And you note in this case here that we're favoring more of the superior border of the canal because generally that's of greater concern especially as it relates to implantology. Once I identify where the mental framing is here, I'll double click I have now set the canal within our sectional views, which in many cases will give us a greater clinical accuracy to identify it as it relates to the cortical plates, but also perhaps as it relates to the ridge itself. At this point in time, it's encouraged to pause the video once again, navigate back over to the Easy 3D software, and identify the canal using the sectional views.